If you're looking for a great way to feed a bunch of people without breaking the bank, this baked ziti with ricotta cheese and a homemade tomato sauce is the way to go. It's absolutely delicious and by adding ricotta cheese and making our own homemade tomato sauce, it's going to elevate this baked ziti and it's going to be quite the crowd pleaser without spending a bunch. Sally that girl in the kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make baked ziti with ricotta. Yes, it sounds simple, but I'm telling you it's gonna be so good because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own sauce and I'm telling you, it comes together in a flash and it is so much better than using the jarred stuff. Everyone is gonna ask, what did you put in this? Why is it so absolutely delicious? Because it's a simple dish, but by adding ricotta, ricotta cheese, to the ziti and by making the sauce ourselves, it is spectacular. And I like to save some of that sauce to serve on top or maybe even on the plate underneath that piece. And of course, you can serve it with some garlic bread or a salad and just have yummy bread to dip into that sauce. And it's going to be spectacular. And the best part, it feeds a crowd. We're gonna get a nice big pan out of it without spending too much money on it. And it's really filling and it's a crowd pleaser. So I'm super excited to teach you how to make it. So let's not wait another second and let's get started. For today's recipe, you will need two 29 ounce cans of tomato sauce, one 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes. I'm using San Marzano tomatoes, which I love. One third cup of extra virgin olive oil, plus some more for drizzling. Three cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one tablespoon of dried basil, one tablespoon of dried oregano. I also like to add some of my own homegrown Italian oregano, but of course that is totally optional because I do realize that not everyone grows their own Italian oregano at home. So if you don't have any, that's fine. You can of course pick some up at the supermarket or even some fresh basil leaves and cut up those and add them in, but that is totally optional. I also like to add three tablespoons of dehydrated minced onions, which you can substitute for some really finely chopped onions, but I really like the texture of those dehydrated onions once they rehydrate in this delicious sauce. They just kind of melt away and just really flavor the sauce. You'll also need three tablespoons of sugar, which of course you can use less sugar if you wanna watch your sugar, that's totally fine. But I find that three tablespoons really balances out this delicious tomato sauce. You'll also need two tablespoons of salt that you're gonna be adding to the water for boiling your pasta. And then you'll need about two teaspoons of salt to add into the sauce itself. Of course, you can also add less salt if you're watching your salt. You can always taste this as you're cooking it and decide how much sugar and how much salt you prefer in your sauce. You'll also need some fresh ground black pepper to taste, 24 ounces of ricotta cheese, 16 ounces of shredded mozzarella cheese, a couple of ounces of grated Parmesan cheese, plus some more for sprinkling, two 16 ounce boxes of ziti, and some non-stick cooking spray. You'll also need a garlic press and a knife, or of course you could just mince up your garlic with a knife, a large spoon for stirring, a large colander, a wet measuring cup, some measuring spoons, a large spoon and a large fork, such as a serving spoon and fork, a can opener, of course, to open your cans, and then you need a large, deep 
baking dish. I'm using my lasagna pan. Just make sure it's large capacity because we're adding a lot of pasta and a lot of cheese. And then you'll also need some aluminum foil and a large bowl for mixing your yummy ingredients. You'll need a large pot in order to boil those two boxes of ziti. You'll need a medium sized pot, but this one you want with a lid to make your yummy tomato sauce in. And finally, you'll need some oven mitts to remove your hot baked ziti with ricotta from the oven. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to work on is my sauce. So I've gone ahead and measured out my ingredients. I have my tomato sauces next to me and my beautiful canned peeled tomatoes and my garlic and everything ready to go in. So now I grabbed my medium sized pot and I'm gonna start by adding my extra virgin olive oil. And then right on top of that beautiful and fragrant olive oil, I'm going to add my garlic cloves that I have pressed, or of course, as I said, you can mince them and then just add those right in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna warm up this garlic to just get it fragrant and just get those beautiful aromas going. So I've put my heat on medium and then I'm just gonna let this start to infuse that oil with that delicious garlic flavor. I'm just gonna stir it all and then just really all it's gonna take is about a minute or so, it's gonna start to bubble up and get absolutely fragrant. And then I'm just gonna give it all a little stir and I'm gonna go on to start adding the rest of my ingredients. You do not wanna burn your garlic. So you're just gonna do this for about a minute or so and then you're just gonna come right in and start adding your cans of tomato sauce. There we go with the first one. And then I'm just gonna repeat the same thing. I'm gonna add that second can of tomato sauce right on top of that. And then I'm going to be adding my whole peeled tomatoes, but I like to break my tomatoes up by hand. I just love the process of just squishing these tomatoes and breaking them down by hand. Of course, my hands have been tremendously washed. They are super clean as they always are when I cook. So I'm very comfortable with just grabbing these tomatoes and squashing them by hand. I just find it's an amazing process. I really just love connecting with the food as I cook. But of course, if you're not into the idea of squishing these by hand, then of course you can just put them in a bowl and use a potato masher and then just mash them down that way and then add them into the sauce. That is totally up to you. But I just love getting my hands dirty when I'm cooking and just squishing these away by hand. So now I've broken down all of those beautiful tomatoes and then there's some sauce left at the bottom of the can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that right in and just make sure to get all that delicious San Marzano yumminess in there. And then I'm just gonna give it all a little bit of a stir and you see there's some chunks in here so that's totally okay if you find any chunks that are a bit large then you can just use your spoon and then just break them down a bit but the idea is that there definitely should be some chunks they're going to just break down slowly as we cook this sauce and it's just going to end up being absolutely delicious with this extra virgin olive oil and all of those yummy spices we're about to add so now, we're gonna start by adding our salt, but as I said, you can add this in a little later if you rather taste it, just add a little and then add some more if you need to, that's totally up to you. Then I'm adding my onion powder, my garlic powder, my dehydrated minced onions, trust me when I tell you, they're really gonna flavor our sauce. And then right on top of that, I'm gonna add my herbs. So I'm going to add my dried basil. And now my dried oregano. Of course, the order that you add these in does not matter. We're just adding all of our dried spices in. 
and then I'm gonna add my sugar. As I said, you can stir it, taste it, add a little, then add a little more. If you wanna control how much sugar you add, that's totally fine. Then I'm gonna add my freshly ground black pepper, which of course, I'm just gonna add it till my heart's content. I like to grind mine a little coarse, but you can go as fine or as coarse as you'd like, and you can add as much or as little as you'd like. And then once that's all in, then I'm just gonna take my spoon and I'm just gonna incorporate all of these dry ingredients into that delicious sauce. The smell is already amazing. And by using all of these dried herbs, I'm really, really packing in a ton of flavor into my sauce. It's really gonna make this sauce so, so delicious and so flavorful. And you saw how quickly we brought it together. And honestly, it is so much better than the jarred stuff. Just by bringing these ingredients together yourself on your stove, you're adding some extra love into that baked ziti with ricotta, and it's really going to elevate the flavor of your dish. So now, I've stirred it all in. I've broken up a couple of pieces of tomato that I found that were a little bit larger than I wanted, and then I'm good to go. I'm going to move on. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few leaves of my homegrown Italian oregano. As I said, of course, this is totally optional. I happen to grow oregano on my windowsill, and so I love that I have some fresh herbs right at my fingertips, so then, of course, I like to take advantage of them when I am making anything Italian. Sometimes I grow basil, sometimes I grow oregano, sometimes I grow both. So whatever I have on hand, I definitely like to add when I'm making any Italian dish. But of course, as I said, this is totally optional. If you can pick some up and you wanna add it in, great. Like I said, you can just cut up some basil leaves instead, add those in, whatever you'd like. Or if you don't have fresh herbs available, that's totally fine because those dried herbs are really gonna flavor our sauce. So do not worry. And as you saw, I just added a pinch. I just like to give it a touch of those fresh herbs, but that's totally optional. So now everything is in, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my heat and I'm gonna lower it. I was on medium. I'm gonna go either to low or a medium simmer if your stove has a simmer setting. If not, low is totally fine because I wanna allow my sauce to cook. We want it slowly simmering because what we're gonna do is we're going to put our lid on it and we're going to allow it to vent just a touch and then we are going to set a 30 minute timer to slowly allow that sauce to become absolutely divine and in the meantime we're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees making sure we have a rack placed in the center and I'm also going to go ahead and fill my larger pot with water and turn my heat on to high in my stove. Then I'm gonna add to it those approximately two tablespoons of salt. We want plenty of salt to flavor that pasta as it boils. And then I just like to give it all a stir. I don't know about you, but in my house, my mom always taught me to use a fork when stirring both my pasta or my rice for whatever reason, for it not to become soupy. I don't know, but a fork it is. So now my sauce is beautiful. It's almost ready. It's been cooking and I have 10 minutes left for that sauce to be ready. And the water is also boiling. So I'm gonna go ahead and add both of my boxes into my boiling water because that way there's 10 minutes left on my timer for my sauce, so both my pasta and my sauce will be ready right around the same time. So now, I let my pasta boil. As I said, I'm looking for an al dente. According to my package, that should be 10 minutes. And then after those 10 minutes, my sauce is smelling incredible. It has thickened up. It's been infused with all of those delicious Italian spices and that garlic and that extra virgin olive oil. And it is just so yummy. You can use this sauce over everything and even just for dipping some crusty bread into it it is super delicious so now i'm going to turn it off because it's ready and now i'm also going to turn off my pasta because it's been cooking for 10 minutes 
and it's al dente. And then I drain my pasta really well in my colander, in my sink. Then I add it back to my large pot and I immediately drizzle it with some extra virgin olive oil. This way I can kind of stir it and I avoid the pasta all clumping up together as I get ready to add my sauce and of course my delicious cheeses into this yummy baked ziti with ricotta and homemade tomato sauce. So now my pasta is good to go and I'm going to move on to create that yummy cheesy goodness. So now you'll notice that I have a container of 32 ounces of ricotta cheese but in my ingredients I said to use about 24 so I'm using about three-fourths of this container of ricotta cheese that should be enough for this amount of pasta and sauce so i'm just going to add that right into this large bowl you need a really large bowl because we have plenty of cheese pasta and sauce going in so i'm just going to store that bit of ricotta back in my fridge and then i'm just going to sprinkle in a couple of ounces of grated parmesan cheese i don't really measure this i call it about maybe an ounce or two of grated parm. Just add that right in with my ricotta cheese. And then right on top of that, I am going to be adding in some mozzarella. So I am gonna save about maybe half of this particular pack. This is an eight ounce pack. I say we're using a total of 16 ounces, but I do wanna save some because I wanna be able to sprinkle that on top of my baked ziti with ricotta. So I'm only gonna add about half of that first pack. And then I can add in the other pack, which is a full eight ounces. So I've added about 12 ounces into the mix and saved four for the top of my big ziti. And then I'm just gonna stir it all up really well to combine. I want all of those cheeses to marry and to just nicely come together because I'm going to be adding to them that delicious homemade sauce that we worked on and it is going to create the creamiest, yummiest, cheesiest <laughs> bind for our pasta to make a delicious baked ziti with ricotta. So there is our sauce. I've just let it sit, it's off. It's just been sitting on our stove and I'm gonna be adding that into this yummy, cheesy goodness to create the most luscious deliciousness. That sauce is so tasty and so crazy good. It really, really makes this big ziti. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a spoon and I'm just gonna spoon a little over it first just to make my pot a little less heavy. It's just gonna make it a little easier for me to handle it and to be able to pour the sauce in on top of the cheese. But remember, we're gonna be adding about three fourths of this pot of sauce into our baked ziti because we want to reserve about a fourth of that sauce because we want to use it for when we're serving our baked ziti. We want to have extra sauce to pour over or under our ziti or to have to serve at our table with some crusty bread. You definitely want to save some of that sauce on the side. It is absolutely delicious. So now we've poured in about three fourths of that sauce and then the warmth of that sauce is just gonna really bring those cheeses together. It's gonna melt down that delicious ricotta, parmesan, mozzarella, and it's gonna create the yummiest, thickest, most delicious, most flavorful sauce for your baked ziti. It's just spectacular. Just look at that stuff. <laughs> it's amazing. So. The sauce is ready to go. I'm gonna bring over my pasta that has been anxiously waiting to marry with this delicious sauce that we have just created. And I'm just gonna add all of it in. There's a whole bunch, which is why I said we need a big baking dish to cook this, and of course, a big bowl to mix it all together. So now once all of the pasta is in, all that's left is to carefully stir it together. I say carefully because I don't wanna break up those beautiful 
zitty tubes. I want to keep them intact, which is one of the reasons I cooked my pasta al dente. It really allows me to stir in this beautiful cheesy sauce without breaking up my pasta. And of course, the pasta is going to continue to cook because we're gonna bake this so that it becomes absolutely beautiful and golden, topped with cheese. It's just gonna be spectacular. Now, of course, you could pretty much serve this as is, as a yummy, cheesy, creamy pasta because it's absolutely divine right now. But we are gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna take my deep lasagna pan and I'm going to give it a little bit of a spray on the sides and the bottom of my pan. And that way it'll be easier to serve my baked ziti once it's ready. But before I add my yummy pasta to my pan, let me show you what the sides of this pan look like. So this is a deep dish lasagna pan. Look how deep it is. It is pretty much as wide as my hand. And there's plenty of room for lots of yummy pasta. In this case, a delicious baked ziti, or of course you can make a lasagna. You definitely want a deep pan for this dish. So now, I'm gonna bring over that delicious bowl of yumminess and I'm just going to pour it all right into my prepared pan. Look at how absolutely yummy and cheesy and delicious this baked ziti looks. And I'm telling you, we just took a little extra time to make a homemade sauce. It came together super quickly. The stove pretty much does all of the work and it's really going to make such a difference in the flavor of this lasagna and by making your own sauce you can watch your sugar you can watch your salt or if you like it sweeter you can add even a little more sugar you can customize the flavor of your sauce to your own liking more herbs less herbs however you like it but it just really makes a difference when you make a delicious homemade sauce for your baked ziti with ricotta so now, remember that little bit of mozzarella cheese that we had saved? Well, now is when we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of it, and we're just gonna sprinkle it right on top of this beautiful baked ziti before we're going to pop it into the oven. Just go ahead and give it a nice sprinkle. Use the rest of the bag to just cover your beautiful baked ziti with this shredded mozzarella. And then, of course, for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and give it all a little sprinkle of this grated Parmesan cheese on top too, because why not? It's gonna help make a beautiful golden top to this delicious baked ziti with ricotta, and it's just gonna finish flavoring it, and it's just gonna be absolutely perfect once it is baked. I cannot wait for you to see it. So now I'm just going to cover my pan. I use a long roll of aluminum foil because I just find it's easier to cover my large pans when I'm using my longer roll. And then I'm just gonna cover this real well so that I can bake it covered. And then I will broil the top just for a few minutes to finish that top and make it nice and golden. So I pop it in on a center rack and I'm gonna set a 35 minute timer to allow it to slowly cook at 350. And then after those 30 minutes, I'm gonna turn on my broiler and I'm gonna set a three minute timer, but I'm not going to leave my oven's side. I'm gonna watch it because I don't wanna burn it, of course, at this point. I wanna make sure it gets a beautiful color, but I do not want it to burn. And so once I'm satisfied with what it looks like, then I'm just going to carefully bring it out of the oven and look at that beautiful baked city with ricotta. Wow, 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 it smells amazing. All of those beautiful, Italian herbs and that amazing homemade sauce that we put together. It is going to be so delicious. There isn't a single soul that is not going to love this baked ziti. When you make it with your own homemade tomato sauce, it really just becomes completely elevated and it just feels all the more special and I know everyone is going to absolutely love it. So when I go ahead and serve my baked ziti, I like to serve it with that sauce on the side and of course I love to just make some delicious crusty bread, a nice salad, and I also love to prepare my spice roasted cauliflower florets. They're a perfect side and we have a beautiful meal that can serve 
a lot of people without breaking the bank. It's really a delicious, special dish, and it really isn't crazy expensive to make, and the results are absolutely divine. I know everyone is going to enjoy it. So as I always say, enough with the admiring. It's now time for me to take a taste. I love adding just a little layer of that delicious homemade sauce at the bottom of the plate before serving a piece of this baked ziti right on top of it. But of course, you can do the ziti and then the sauce on top. No judgment. <laughs> serve it however you prefer. But believe me, you're going to want to serve it because it is so yummy. Look at how amazing it looks. Those yummy cheeses and that delicious homemade sauce. Wow, it is just remarkable how easy and how delicious this dish is to make. And look at that, how beautiful. Tell me that doesn't look impressive. A nice salad, a beautiful side, some beautiful garlic bread, and you have a meal. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And trust me, it is so yummy. <laughs> I cannot wait to take a bite. It's just so absolutely divine. And my whole life, Italian food has got to be one of my favorites. My dad always reminds me of how he used to take me for Italian as a child because I was just completely obsessed with Italian food. And till this day, I am completely obsessed with Italian food and tomato sauce. I just find it all absolutely delicious. It's warm, it's inviting, and it's just, there's something really extra special about it. It's just super, super tasty. Okay, enough talk. It's time to taste this baby because my mouth is literally watering as I speak. I just can't wait. It's just looking so incredible and it's smelling amazing. Wow. It looks cheesy and yummy and I am literally salivating. Mmm. Wow. It is so tasty. That homemade sauce is really, really yummy. It's just remarkable. Came together real easy, but it makes such a difference. Mmm. You can really taste that this is special. That homemade sauce, it's just so different than the jarred stuff. And yes, as I said, I am obsessed with tomato sauce. <laughs> so I'm going to actually even add a little sprinkle on top because I can never get enough sauce. I could probably just spoon that stuff up and just eat it straight up because I absolutely love it. It's super yummy, very flavorful. Mmm. It's so good. It's really, really so, so tasty. All those cheesy bits on top that got perfectly browned when we finished broiling it at the end and all that creamy ricotta, mozzarella, parmesan cheese. It's just super tasty, easy to make and really special. We made that homemade tomato sauce and it's just going to be extra special. Mm, so good. So how crazy good does this baked ziti look? I told you by adding that ricotta cheese and by making that sauce ourselves, we are going to create something super yummy. And as I told you earlier, it is abundant too. It's perfect to have some friends over for dinner. Sometimes we think about it because we're like, wow, do I really want to go through all the expense and all the trouble to have people over? But when you do something as simple as this, everyone is gonna love it. They're gonna wanna come back for seconds and it is super yummy and satisfying. And the best part is it's made with love. And I know you're gonna love this recipe. Trust me. No, better yet, don't trust me. You're gonna have to try to make this recipe yourself. And of course, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you again. I'm always thanking you for your beautiful comments, for liking my videos, and of course, for sharing them with your friends. And of course, share it even with yourself. You can send it to yourself as a text message so that when you wanna come back to it, you can find it. But what would be better? Subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the little notification bell so that you get notified every time I put up a new recipe and I do that all of the time and that way if you go over to my video tab all of my recipe videos are there you cannot lose them because they're all going to be there at your fingertips 
And if you're not already following Sally That Girl in the Kitchen, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and on Pinterest. And you can also follow me as Sally That Girl FL on Twitter, Snapchat, and on TikTok. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Sally That Girl in the Kitchen.